Hey, it's Mike here, and today there's a war on people who eat meat, according to the pretty large YouTube channel Redacted. They did a segment on, uh, you know, the growing cultural pressures against meat eaters. But there is no doubt a war on people who eat meat as planet haters. Oh. So they're telling you, don't eat meat, that means you're a sinner. But most of it was actually focusing on how plant-based burgers are not actually a good alternative to meat-based burgers in terms of their health and environmental effects. They do this by using some really out of context data and misinterpreting charts and they even go as far as to insinuate that it's not even worth going vegan for the environment. So we got a lot to cover. Redacted is a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers and they seem to focus on geopolitical content, but I haven't looked deeply into their positions. I'm really just focused on responding to this segment of their video. And I will say, looking through their titles, a lot of it looks really sort of tabloidy. Looks like they're really selling this fear-based, everybody's out to get us, globalism scary narrative. I mean, the title of their video is, oh sh something big is coming and they won't tell us what it is. <laughs> Who's they? Anyway, it has about 300,000 views. And the last 15 minutes or so is dedicated to slamming plant-based meat and just the whole plant-based thing. Anyway, here they are. The more I research things, the more I realize that people should be free to make their own decision and not talk down to. Mea culpa. Wow. Right? Um, but there is no doubt a war on people who eat meat as planet haters. Well, yeah, I mean, meat eating is like the SUV of diet, and of course, environmentalists are not going to appreciate that. And yeah, Captain Planet himself would just be disappointed in meat eaters, and I make all of my life decisions based off Captain Planet because he's our hero. I want a live action reboot, Keanu Reeves as Captain Planet. What were we talking about again? Oh yeah, they elaborate. In fact, Christiana Figueres, a global climate campaigner and former leader of the United Nations climate change body, once said this. How about restaurants in 10 to 15 years start treating carnivores in the same way that smokers are treated? If you want to eat meat, they can do it outside the restaurant. What? So if you eat meat oh my to the concentration camp with you. This is coming, guys. Seriously playing the victim here. Yeah, you guys, meat eaters are definitely the real victims here. I mean, they're only paying people to kill innocent animals literally victimize them. But yeah, yeah, meat eaters the real victim here. But I can sort of see how they feel like that because the whole system is designed to make you forget that you're victimizing animals or as hidden as possible. It's kind of akin to a guy that gets really drunk and beats his wife and then forgets about it. And then his wife is like, do the dishes. And he's like, I'm the real victim. Should we have a culture war on eating meat? Well, I think just how they would probably agree that we need to have a culture war against beating your dog. We also could benefit from a culture war around reducing animal suffering and the needless killing of animals. I don't mind fighting against the killing of these very beautiful animals. Hello everybody, this is uh, a couple of pictures of lizards. They are little, very beautiful animals. Now it's time to get into the health arena, which I know a lot of you guys love and probably is why you watch my channel. Now, are these diets better for your health though? It's debatable because a vegan who eats mostly unprocessed fruits and vegetables is a very different person living on a very different diet than the vegan who's eating these processed alternatives such as Beyond Meat. Yeah, processed foods are not health foods. Did people not know that? But anyway, let's see how far they take this fear-mongering. All right, so let's look at the ingredients for Beyond Meat, uh, water, pea protein, and this canola oil. Hold on, I wanna go through it because I can't okay. even pronounce half If you can't stuff. pronounce it, then you certainly don't know about the research on the health effects of these ingredients. Like what, it, methyl, uh, what was that? Methyl cellul methyl cellulose? Methyl cellulose. Oh no, so scary. A non-toxic thickener made from plant cellulose, AKA plant fiber. And yeah, it actually helps constipated people poop when they take it as a supplement. Ninochiamide, um, pyelodoxine, hydrochloride. Yeah, niacinamide, as it says there, is just a type of vitamin B3, and a bunch of those longer names are just chemical names for vitamins, things that people actually add to health supplements. So much fear-mongering here, and they didn't make it to lecithin, which the dairy industry has been fear-mongering about, but studies show actually lowers cholesterol when taken directly. So just to flip it, what if we added all of these components that are in meat to the back of the label? I mean, we'd be talking about adding things like 
blood slash hemoglobin, estrogen, other hormones, growth factors, antibiotics in many cases, pus, fecal matter, etc. But oh no, methyl cellulose. But I do have to say coconut oil in here is probably the most harmful ingredient, ironically, just because of its effect raising LDL. Yet, it does not raise LDL as much as animal fat does, as this study shows. So it's an improvement, but all of this brings us to the whole vegetable oil segment. These oils are not good for you, unequivocally speaking, right? In fact- Because they cause inflammation, cancer, Actually, there's a lot of equivocation on canola oil, especially when compared to animal fat, which we will get to in a bit, but she continues. Well, they're, they're processed at such high heat temperature that yes, they then have carcinogenic effects. I just have to say, there's no indication that these oils cause cancer in humans, yet we have class 1A and class 2A carcinogens that are in the meat burgers. And when we're talking about heating it to high temperatures from the NIH, these have polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and heterocyclic amines, both carcinogens, one that you breathe in and one that you eat. You just can't point to things about oil that are worse when eating meat as an argument to keep eating meat. In fact, some experts, such as author Mark Sisson, um, say that they cause inflammation for hours after consuming them, much longer than a cigarette. An author saying something with no citation here does not make something valid or credible. And I, I didn't quite catch the name. Was it what, Martha Cassison? Martha Cassison? Mar Martha Cassison. Mark, Mark Wahlberg? I don't know. According to author Kappa Planet, you're wrong about everything. Jokes aside, this was untraceable. Maybe it was in some alternative health book. I could not find it. But for some greater context on canola oil, which he's clearly going after here, we have this large study of 520,000 people that looked at things like total mortality for canola oil, other oils, and things like butter. And canola oil was associated with lower total mortality than average and quite lower than butter, which was higher than the average mortality, both statistically significant. And I don't think a citation is necessary to show that smoking increases mortality. So we're looking at things going a different way here. I don't think eating a lot of oil is healthy. You all know about this. I made oil the vegan killer, but I also think we can't exaggerate claims here. And most ironically, all of these claims as if meat isn't often just fried in vegetable oil anyway. Oh my God. But the point is plant-based alternatives just have to be healthier than meat to make them a healthier choice. All right, now we're gonna take a quick break with today's sponsored Seed DS01 Daily Symbiotics. Symbiotic meaning a combination of prebiotics and probiotics, prebiotics, feed the probiotics, which in this case includes 53.6 billion active cell units of bacteria from 24 select strains. And seed is scientifically backed to support health in these areas, which is a cool chart because it shows exactly how many billions of units there are for each one, like 37 billion for digestive health, gut immunity, and gut barrier integrity. And then of course we've got dermatological health, cardiovascular health, and micronutrient synthesis with billions each. And to keep it fresh, I wanted to quickly focus on gut barrier health because it's super interesting. You may have heard the term leaky gut, but that's not really a scientific term in the research. It's usually referred to as like intestinal barrier function. From this paper, the gastrointestinal mucosa has the complex task to act as a semi-permeable barrier that allows the absorption of nutrients and immune sensing while limiting the transport of potentially harmful antigens and microorganisms. And that barrier defects are associated with a ton of diseases from celiac, inflammatory bowel, and on and on to diabetes and obesity. And Linda is continuing to love taking seeds so much that she accidentally convinced my parents to go and buy it, which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, if you would also like to try it and have it sustainably delivered to you monthly, you can click the link below and use my code Mike15 at checkout for 15% off your first month's order. All right. Now we're gonna get onto the environmental claims of plant-based oils, which seriously was frustrating to listen to as somebody with a bachelor's of science in the field of sustainability. Here she is. Um, also, they are not organic. They require more pesticide use than an animal does. More pesticides than animals, complete bogus claim again. Looking to how pesticides are actually used. A lot of times our main crops like corn and soy, virtually all of that is going to animal feed. You no, know, 98% of soy meal is fed to animals in the US and these are heavily sprayed crops. And from the USDA 
Corn and soy make up about 60% of total pesticide volume. Animal products result in the spray of more pesticides than plant-based alternatives, clearly. Okay, so what of their impact on the planet? According to some studies, on par with meat. Uh, in fact, these oils contribute to deforestation and the amount of farmland that they require has increased exponentially. The only oil meaningfully connected driving deforestation is palm oil, which she admits isn't in either the Impossible Burger or the Beyond Meat Burger, which she's looking at here. However, she says that they are in vegan products widely. Now, as a vegan, I am super against palm oil. It kills orangutans and all of that horrible stuff, and vegans are probably more likely to avoid palm oil than other people, and you really can't make this a vegan issue or plant-based alternative issue when palm oil is in approximately half Half of all packaged products that exist. So let's look at this chart that shows us um, the greenhouse gas emission of growing these types of things, right? Palm oil's the worst. Um, so the oils are the worst. Now this chart is probably the most blatantly misused of anything in this video. And first of all, it's not comparing oil to animal products. And second of all, it's looking at the emissions per kilogram and not serving, and since oil is something that is used in a very small amount compared to other foods, it's gonna look way higher than it would be for servings. And she used an R world in data chart, so she probably views that as credible. Well, here's the chart that she should have used that she did not use, which looks at animal products as well, and they do have at least olive oil on there, and we can match the charts, because it's the same unit, and see that palm oil, again, which I hate, is right there, just dwarfed by something like beef, which is ridiculously high at 60 kilograms of CO2 equivalents per kilogram. And I would add that canola oil, which is actually in things like the Beyond Burger, is half that of palm at about four kilograms of CO2 equivalents per kilogram of oil. So this starts to look like completely bogus claims when you realize that averaging oils out, you're still talking about 10 times the carbon footprint for beef, which is of course what burgers are generally made out of. And then add on top of that, that oil only makes up about 15% of the weight of a Beyond Burger. Yeah, total bogus claims. If you were to make a Beyond Burger out of 100% oil in terms of its weight, it would still only have 1 10th to 1 15th the emissions footprint that a beef burger would. But it gets worse because the remaining 85% is largely made out of that plant protein, in this case, pea protein for Beyond Meat burgers. And looking to this study in the Journal of Food Policy, yeah, we're talking about like one to two kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilogram, super low. So right here, you can see some math of combining those two and you know, we're landing at about two kilograms, but then maybe you need to add, hey, let's just add about another kilogram for packaging and those other micro ingredients. And the result is that a Beyond Burger emits 1 20th the amount of greenhouse gases that a beef burger does. So she's literally telling you to not eat something that has 1 20th of the carbon footprint of what she's telling you to eat. How is this so wrong? Well, it turns out both these people just have like real estate backgrounds. Maybe they're not, maybe they're not super versed in like food environmental systems. I don't know. And I know the moment anything was paid for by an industry or a company, it becomes tarnished, but Beyond Meat did commission the University of Michigan to do a third party. And they do claim a high level of transparency and meeting certain compliance codes and stuff like that for independent stuff. And the result was that the Beyond Burger had 90% fewer greenhouse gas emissions than beef and also 93% lower land use, which she was attacking it for as well, which is ridiculous. That's why a 2003 study of meat versus plant-based diets found that both are not sustainable if they are based on these oil-based products. The study found that plant-based diets were more sustainable than the average meat-based diet in a limited sense. She didn't cite the actual study as usual, and so I had to do some digging. After digging, I'm 100% sure she's referring to this study because it says a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet is more eco in a limited sense, exact phrase, because it is still high in carbon, possibly from the 39 to one and 14 to one energy input to output ratios of eggs and cow's milk. No points of concern were made about oil's footprint, which were essentially the same between diets. 
And I was amazed to find this more relevant sort of sister study since its URL is one number apart, same journal, same issue, and this chart from it just destroys her logic with meat being six to 20 times more carb intensive than processed soy protein, six to 17 times worse for land use, and over six times as many biocides. So super wrong again. But does going meatless actually help the environment? And cue the appeal to futility that it's completely pointless to make any dietary shift really. Here she is. Now vegetarians like to say that by not eating meat, they reduce their carbon footprint by 50%. But that is misleading because you have to be a vegan to hit that 50% number. But if you're full vegan and you hit this reduction of 50%, what that is is reduction of 50% of your food-related carbon emissions. But the food-related emissions of most humans is really small. It's like 10% of your personal emissions, thereby reducing that by 50% is really only hitting about 4.3% if you're a vegan. I mean, there's always somebody that's gonna accidentally misquote a statistic. She didn't point to anybody that's actually saying that they're reducing their footprint by 50% in total. But yeah, we're talking about dietary footprint. However, she's again making it seem like it's not worth making any dietary changes, which is bogus to no like environmental scientist would ever tell you. But she referred to most humans saying it's not worth it, but looking to most humans or the world, we can see based off different FAO reports that livestock emits about 14 and a half to 18 percent of all global emissions, making it a leading, if not the leading emitter of greenhouse gases, depending on how you slice the pie. So that's massive and worth eliminating eliminating by making a single dietary switch. But where does she get those low ball numbers that she was talking about? I mean, oh, you're gonna get 4% at best. She doesn't cite anything directly, which is a trend with most people on YouTube, which is like why I started a YouTube channel, but it's likely from US statistics, which have a couple things wrong with them. Firstly, if you do believe the EPA's chart, for example, we have to realize it doesn't represent the world because the US just emits so much more carbon in other areas like transport and energy than the average person in the world. But I think the main point here is that the EPA has massively undercounted livestock emissions as I've covered at length before. I did what I would consider a very fair and transparent modeling of livestock emissions in the US based off production. I have an entire spreadsheet with everything linked. You can check the numbers. Looking at production of animal products from the government and the industry multiplied by the emissions figures from the Environmental Working Group and the FAO, you can see that we're roughly between 13 and 19% of total emissions of the US from livestock. I will link the spreadsheet below and it keeps going from there, but then looking to the University of Michigan's Center for Sustainable Systems, it is clear that animal products make up about 75% of dietary emissions for the average US person. So the reduction would be bigger on several fronts if you go fully plant-based slash vegan. But it's obvious that there's no silver bullet, but that's not a reason to not make any of these changes. And yes, I believe the livestock footprint is higher than all these estimates, but it gets worse. And that's why I have to nutshell the methane issue really quickly. And it's twofold. First of which is that we have to count how much is actually making it into the atmosphere for these gases, known as the airborne fraction. And they never do that in these models. And methane is about 100% making it into the atmosphere when it's released, but the airborne fraction of CO2 is only 45%, so less than half of it is making it up there. So things like livestock and fracking should be higher in that sense. And then we also have the global warming potential over a given time. How powerful is a gas compared to CO2? And everyone keeps looking at 100 years. I think it's just as relevant to be looking at 50, 20, or even 10 years out. And at just 10 years out, methane is 100 times more powerful than CO2. So that amplifies all of these numbers for livestock even more. And we're almost done talking about this particular issue, but finally, it's not just about emissions, it's how we use land and livestock. It takes up approximately half of the lower 48 land. If we stop doing that, we could let that rewild, we could be capturing carbon on that land. Anyway, she goes as far as to say that eating these plant-based alternatives that contain oil because they contain oil will increase food insecurity. She's really doing some gymnastics now. Now, the major problem is that these product products require large industrial farming. 
right? Huge crops of seeds for oils, and this will create more food insecurity. Her point to support this was quoting like an infographic quote of Dr. Mercola. Such a quack that McGill University even has an entire page dedicated, dedicated to how quacky he is. <laughs> dedicated. Consider this statistic from Dr. Joseph Mercola, an osteopath. He says, Industrial agriculture uses 75% of available farmland, yet produces just 30% of food consumed globally. So if the industrial agriculture share continues to rise, it will eventually kill the whole planet and eliminate any possibility of growing food. But what is she not getting here? Because this industrial ag land use, again, is mostly industrial ag as animal agriculture. And in terms of food insecurity from this Cornell article, the grain fed to animals in the US alone is enough to feed every hungry person on earth, prevent them from dying of starvation, calorically. Oh. So they're telling you, don't eat meat, that means you're a sinner, right? Eat these processed food instead and put your diet in the hands of a few powerful companies. Right, the Great Reset. It's always the weird globalist fear agenda with a lot of these channels, and that's the main thing that they're selling, as I mentioned before. But guess what? If we're gonna play along with that, they're already in charge of your food supply. I mean, look at Smithburg, that Chinese company owns a bunch of US land, factory farms, a ton of you know massive factory farm producer. And we've got JBS, the giant multinational Brazilian corporation, and on and on and on. These are the people that are currently being supported. The few multinational corporations that are controlling the food supply among others. And then we have smaller startups like Impossible and Beyond Meat that they're like, don't eat that. Right, yes. this is the consolidation of power. We're gonna buy up all of these farms in the Netherlands and, and the United States, run them out of business, get rid of all of your, your livestock and use these farms to create these plant-based processed garbage foods. Right. Once living animals are eliminated and replaced by patented plant-derived alternatives, private companies will control the food supply and therefore control the people. Will control the food supply? They already do control the food supply, and that means that they're controlling you to the amount that they still would control you if they decided to sell you plant products instead of animal products. Anyway, you're getting the point. I think they're just completely wrong in virtually all aspects. However, to give them credit, uh, they do say that it's good to reduce meat consumption and eat more plants, so that is good. But you could also just replace that reduced meat consumption with these plant-based alternatives and be even more eco. In the end, apparently political commentators do not have super wise things to say about nutrition. Who knew? Who knew that real estate wasn't a, a degree in global sustainability? <laughs> and no, oil is not a health food generally, unless you're talking about like flaxseed oil raw, as I covered in my oil health ranking video. So I've covered this a lot. And the conclusion is still that animal fat is less healthy for you and no oils are not shown to cause cancer. Well, on the other hand, red and processed meat are class 2A and 1A carcinogens. And finally, for the environmental aspect, not only do I believe that livestock emissions are massively undercounted in the US, they are still quite large globally, so we should be telling people to not support this industry. And finally, she's telling you to not eat plant-based burgers that have 20 times lower carbon footprint than the beef counterpart. Some of the worst possible advice in terms of global food security to, again, stop eating plant-based alternatives. You get the point. This is ridiculous, and I'm happy I was able to refute it. So keep it coming. Send me things you want me to respond to. And finally, you can click the link below to get 15% off your first month supply of seed. And thank you to Seed for helping keep this channel going. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know down below what you think. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.